So yeah, again, numerous experiments, such as the one that I just demonstrated, which is easy to do at home, right? Takes nearly nothing to do. Demonstrates that x-rays and light, forms of light, are waves. They act like waves, but they behave like particles in the right circumstances, as we just said. They're emitted one at a time, they're absorbed one at a time, but travel through space as a wave. We go on to say Louis de Broglie wonders that same thing about electrons. He does all the mathematical equations for it. And experimentalists come along and they perform what's called the dual slit experiment, as you saw with light, but with electrons. Okay. So again, to recap what I was trying to say, take a ball and throw it at the slit, right? So you have a gun that can emit a bunch of these balls, right? And you throw it at a slit and then maybe the ball is covered in paint, something like that. And it hits the detector behind the slit and you will get a little blotch of paint where the ball hit. Okay. So you can imagine that in the thought experiment. If I throw the ball and it goes to the left slit, I'm going to get a blotch of paint on the left side. Okay. If I throw the ball and it goes to the right slit, I'm going to get a blotch of paint on the right side. Yeah. And if I throw the ball and it hits to the left or right or the middle of those slits, it doesn't go through at all. Yeah. So what kind of pattern would I build up on the detector with a ball like this covered in paint? No, I, I, the point is I would build up, if this were throw, if I were throwing just a ball through this slit, a, pe a thing, right, through the slit, it's either going to go to the left or the right, and it's either going to get here or there, okay? It's not going to create an interference pattern like we just showed, yeah? The ball will either go through the left side or the right side, not through both, okay? What would go through both slits are things like waves, right? So if I did this with water, it would go through both, but a ball only goes through one at a time. A ball, a bunch of balls going through the dual slit, would not build up an interference pattern like the light did. Okay. However, electrons, which they liked to picture like a little ball, they show we even show them in the book like a little ball, right? If they take a, a beam of electrons, so take a beam of electrons, kind of like a beam of light. Okay. Take a beam of electrons, send it through the dual slit. Guess what? It builds up an interference pattern too. Okay, just like the light sources do. Okay, telling us what? Electrons are really a wave. Absolutely. So then they go, well, wait, 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 wait. Okay, that makes sense because you could do this with water, but water is just really made up of little pieces, right? Little particles, yeah? So then take it, let's try this experiment again. Let's take and send only, this is the weird part, send only one electron at a time. Okay, you can imagine that if you send one electron at a time, it'll act like a little ball. It'll either go through the left side or the right side. Yeah, and then no interference pattern should build up if you do it one at a time, right? So they do it one at a time, left side, right side. And as they continue to shoot electrons through, what slowly manifested to them was an interference pattern. Meaning that in order for an interference pattern to build up, the electron, a single electron has to be a wave, not a particle. Okay, So electrons are waves, and in fact all of the particles that we call particles are really waves. Okay, They are not pieces of things, they are waves in a more fundamental field. Okay, Just like light is a wave in the electromagnetic field, right? an electron is a wave in the electron field. Protons a wave in the proton field. Okay, they're waves that behave like particles. So experiments confirm that subatomic particles are what are called wave functions. Okay, I'm not going to go into that. They are wave functions, so they're kind of wavy. Okay, that's the point. They're not such like hard particle things. They're not a ball. Okay. This agrees with other equations, such as Einstein's equation, Planck's equations for energy, um, showing that high energies are associated with high frequencies. High frequencies are associated with short wavelength. The outcome of all of this, and I'm not going to go through this fancy math, the outcome of all of this is that what we call matter, because remember, electrons are matter, right? It's no surprise that the light wave did it, but it should be surprising that the matter particles are doing it, okay? So the consequence is, is that Matter is not solid, okay? Matter is made of waves, matter waves, okay? They are just so compact, okay, that they act like particles to us, 
Okay, we see them as particles because we are very, very big in relationship to these matter particles. Okay, we're made of quite a few matter particles. When the electrons act like particles and when they act like waves, depend on how they are observed. So the other thing of it, about it is I didn't tell you that when they did the dual slit experiment and they put a detector here to detect if the electron went through the left or the right side, the electrons do not build up an interference pattern on the wall behind it. It's almost like the electrons knew that you were watching them. Okay, now they don't know anything, so I'm, I'm, I'm fibbing a little bit. But when they put a detector here at the dual slit to tell if the electron went through the left or the right, it only ever goes through the left or the right. Okay. When they don't put a detector, they don't measure the electron at the dual slit part. They only measure it back at the detector and interference pattern shows up. Okay. The electrons know when they're being watched. They act like waves when we're not observing them at the, at the dual slit. They act like particles when we do observe them at the dual slit. Okay, um, this is some of the weirdness of how matter waves work. So yeah, this subatomic world, what's the deal? What's with all the waves acting like particles, right? So at extremely low energies, we get fields, like the magnetic field, okay? At intermediate energies, we get waves, such as light waves. At high energies, we get particles, such as electrons, protons, neutrons. Sorry, we get particles, though. At these extremely high energies, wavelengths unimaginably short, we get massive things. Remember, E equals mc squared says energies of, or mass is a form of energy, right? So at extremely high energies, these waves take on mass characteristics and can be weighed as regular matter. Visible light behaves like a wave, sometimes like a particle. X-rays, they're really a wave, but they act more particle-like. And what determines the behavior they manifest is the specific conditions around them. And at this point, you have everything you need to understand the, radi the physics of radiation, okay? So I'm gonna leave it here. I'm gonna stop now and I'm gonna say,